Hi, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. We're going to be talking about up leveling today, and I have a super fun little little journal prompt visualization exercise that I really want you to focus on during this episode while we listen. And you can kind of take notes and use this as a tool in your everyday life. It is very, very powerful to me. And my business coach, Allie Reeves, actually taught me this. So this is all coming from her. And it is so powerful because I think we really think about when we think about up leveling in health, same for any kind of other area of life, the energetics of up leveling in health is really two different things. And I think we usually, it's, there's a negative way to do it and a positive way to do it. And I think most of us gravitate towards the negative way to do it because that's kind of all we know. And we kind of forget that there's a whole other way to up level in a positive way, a way more fun way. So I'm going to teach you how to do that today. It's going to be so much fun. And um, yeah, anything, what else is up in my life before I start? I broke my, my tooth. I chipped my tooth a long time ago. So I, I'm, if you notice until like January, <laughs> when I'm able to fix it, this humongous chip in my tooth. Yeah. I just, sometimes I get caught staring at myself. I'm like, God, I need to get that fixed, but it's coming anyway, irrelevant. So let's, let's jump into the two different ways to up level. Well, before I start that, I want to say the reason I was inspired to talk about this today is that I think we have, and I used to do this, is we all have this compulsive need to just get more information. We always think that there's one little piece of information that if we just had that information, it would unlock everything for us. And let me tell you, like, yes, information is important. And as someone who's a compulsive reader, I get it. But there is actually very little nutrition information you need to succeed. So for example, if you bought the formula, you have everything you need to succeed in the formula. As my products increase with price, usually what increases with that is more of this mental, emotional work that goes along with the actual information you need to succeed. Because so much of success is the mental and emotional work. Like the nutrition stuff, you guys are good. Like you have everything you need to succeed from the nutrition place. And if you're not budging, 99.9% of the time, I think it is because of your behaviors, your emotions, your thoughts, your mindset. And that can take a lot of work. And that's why I spend so much of my time on this podcast talking about that because it's it's everything. So let's talk about that today because I want to move away from this compulsive need for more information and move into a place of positive thoughts, positive behaviors, positive mindset. So there are two ways to up-level. The first one I'm going to talk about is this negative way to up-level, and the second I'm going to talk about is a positive way to up-level. So the negative way to up-level is usually a rock bottom, and I'm sure you are familiar with that in your own life. So it would be, you know, something so bad happened that if you didn't make a change, worse things would happen to you. So it's like it's like this is your all or nothing for you. So I have a bunch of those examples throughout my healing journey. The first one was when I was 15, the doctor said to me, you know, your anemia is so severe and you have osteopenia as a 15 year old. So you need to fix this. You know, that is very dangerous to have osteopenia as a 15 year old because you get osteoporosis, you can break your hip when you're, you know, whatever. So it's really not good. So it was like severe, severe health, but usually it has to be like life threatening. Like if someone's like, oh, you're bloated, like that's not life threatening. So it's not really going to, that's not going to create this desire to change if you're a little bloated. We can all live with that, right? So it was life threatening. In 2011, I had another aha moment, which was I had so much depression and anxiety from my health that I was using drugs every night to cope with my health problem. I was in college and it was kind of one of those things where I was like, I can't do drugs every single night (laughs) 
for, I was doing Molly basically every single night when I was 21 years old for like a five month period. I was living in Barcelona at the time. So part of that was just the nightlife culture. But another part of that was like, I, I literally couldn't cope with daily life. And my escape was going to the club, doing Molly, waking up at like noon, going to class and just like repeating it all over again. And I finally, you know, left Barcelona. I had no drugs. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, my life is in shambles. Like this is my life. This is unacceptable. And that's where I found the low FODMAP diet and the rest was history. Another part was in 2019, I, that summer I had, you know, my health was actually in a good place in a way that I, I was doing the right things. However, every single weekend I would reset my health. So it was like Mon it was like Tuesday or like Tuesday to Friday or Wednesday to Friday, I was feeling really good. And then like Friday night to Tuesday or Friday night to Wednesday, I was like in this horrible sense of despair again. And it was like a cycle that I couldn't break out of. It's like, I'm doing all the right things nutritionally, but I keep ruining it every single weekend. And it was like compulsive. And that summer of 2019, I got wasted at a friend's wedding. I ended up spraining my ankle and going to the hospital. And because I was so drunk. Um, and then later that summer, I got too, totally blacked out at my bachelorette party. And I kept coming home after these events. And, and I had to cancel like trips. I had to cancel like two trips because of all, I had to cancel things and let people down because of all these things I got into because of my drinking. And Hootie basically, you know, he's always been this beautiful balance of like empathetic, but very firm. And I remember it was August like 19th, 2019. He was like, the way you're behaving is unacceptable. And it was kind of like, you could feel it in his voice. Like I, I, I don't put, I won't tolerate or put up with this anymore. And it was one of those things where I was like, oh my God, like he could actually like leave me if I continued with this behavior. And so it was August, 2019. I said, I'm going to go sober. And that was like, like basically then what would happen is I didn't sabotage every single weekend. And I actually got into an amazing rhythm with my health. Um, I would say those were some three like super rock bottom moments for me of just like total embarrassment, total shame. And then I would say nowadays, the negativeness of my up leveling is really about re the regret of realizing the person that I will not become. So I talk about this a lot. Like, for me, it's like, oh my gosh, if I have kids and they take up so much of my day, well, like, am I, you know, there's been a lot of regret. This past year for me, a lot of my, or part of my movement forward has been this feeling of like, I'm not going to, my like, my time is up as like a young person and like children are going to fill up my entire day. So I want to kind of do everything. I don't want to have any regrets. So that's been a big fire under my butt is to like be the ideal person I want to be because of this sort of impending situation. So, and that's just my experience. However, I think that we don't need to constantly be motivated by negativity. I think that we, there is a huge unlock actually when we tap into the positives of up-leveling instead of being so scared of what could go wrong, why don't we tap into the total opposite, which is everything that could go right and everything that we could experience. And so I learned this through Allie Reeves. She has a program called Time Collapse. And it's all about, it's not like, oh, okay, at like, you know, 32, you have the house and the husband and 35, you have the kids and 40, you have whatever, like all these like stupid rules that you have for yourself. It's like, why can't we achieve things now? Why, why does it have to be a year? Why does it have to be a certain age? Why can't you manifest these things into reality now? Like there's no reason why not, right? So I want you to, this the rest of this episode, you can either kind of pause this and take notes on your notes app. You can write it down in a journal. Um, these are great questions that I actually have saved to my journal and I revisit them daily, actually. It's called my, yeah, it's my vision. 
And this is what I do to tap into my future self every morning. And I do have to say, it's been so freeing and calming. And I've also seen results from doing it. So it's like, wow, you can get results by not shaming yourself into getting results, which is an incredible feeling. So let's start out. I want you to cast your vision. So one one year from now, what does like next level results in your health look like for you? And how would you feel if you were the person who experienced these results as your norm? So let me tell you mine, and obviously yours might be different or similar than mine, but I encourage you to listen to your own intuition. So for me, when I look at my ideal version of health and self, I see someone who is so in tune with their their food and their body. So they have all this food. They have like an abundance of food, whether it be cold recipes, hot recipes, grab and go, snacks that are at their disposal. And whenever they're like, yeah, I'm hungry. I could really I could really eat right now. They can go and make something that tastes so good. And not only that, like it keeps them energized. They don't have this afternoon slump. They they it feels easy on the digestion. It feels electrifying and it's delicious. Like you love the taste of it. And there's no worry about, you know, oh, there's no problem with like, oh, I feel sluggish. Oh, I'm so bloated. Oh, that's hurt me. There's no, there's no confusion over that. And I'm someone who, yeah, I'm energized. I'm lean. I, I, again, this goes back to an episode I did, which is I, you should feel unapologetic about the physical body that you want to have. I, I don't care what it looks like, but you should feel really proud and connected to that vision. So for me, I like feeling lean. I like that feeling. And I like feeling flexible. I like feeling not tense. I like feeling roomy. So things like Pilates or yoga feel really good to me. And I have just a flat stomach. I go to the bathroom every single morning. I don't even worry about that. It just happens, right? And... Yeah, that feels good to me. That's kind of like my ideal health. I love that feeling, okay? And how would it feel if you were that person, right? To me, it feels so effortless. Ooh, feels so effortless. It feels just natural. It just feels in my body. It feels so easy. I love that feeling. Okay, so I would love to know what does that look like for you? What's similar? What's different? Anything that you would add or change? So my next question I'd like to ask you is that if you aren't if you aren't in that body right now or that life right now, what would your reasons be? Why would you tell me you're not experiencing that exact life right now? So looking back at my life, a few examples come to mind. I would say one, I was forcing myself to eat food I didn't like, or I would, sorry, I was forcing myself to eat foods I did not truly love because I was afraid that maybe it'd be a little imbalanced. Like maybe I was forcing myself to eat something because, you know, in the dietetics world, we're like, you know, you should eat this at this specific time. And so I would do that to fulfill that. But that actually wasn't the food I wanted and it wasn't actually what I needed at the time. So it was like forcing energy versus like this trusting in myself energy. Another reason I would say was I did not prioritize myself first. So I had all these limiting beliefs around cooking dinner. You know, it was like, well, if I cook dinner, then I can't respond to emails or I won't have time. Like I don't have personal time in the day and I just want to sit on my couch and like scroll on Instagram and like mindlessly eat. Like I won't have Becky time. Or another limiting belief I had was I'm afraid I'm going to deprive my husband and I'm going to, I'm afraid that I'm going to hurt him if I don't cook a certain way. Another limiting belief I had was it's hard to grocery shop. It's hard to put together food lists. Another limiting belief I had was it's hard to cook. I'm going to be a bad cook. I'm, I'm going to do cooking wrong. I'm still a bad cook. 
just letting you know. I am still a bad cook and it doesn't matter. <laughs> My food, it, like it, Hootie and I laugh, he's a better cook than me. And I, it doesn't matter. I still create food that I enjoy. I'm like, you know, my onions are all different chunky, sloppy pieces. Like they're not pretty. I overbake things. I underbake things. It's still great. I still enjoy my food. Isn't that funny how we think we have to be this like professional chef? I also at the time couldn't trust myself. You know, if I had cravings for certain foods, I couldn't trust myself that that was okay because there was limits, mental limits I had around certain food groups. So if I had a craving for something sweet, it's like, well, I already had something sweet today. I already fulfilled my fruit quota. I shouldn't have more grains. So a lot of it came down to trust. A lot of it came down to thinking things would be way harder than they actually are. Another thing would be I was terrified I would just step wrong. Like I would make a meal and the meal was horrible on my digestion and then I would shame and blame myself for have chosen, for have creating that meal. When really it's like, no, that was a learning experience. Like, okay, you learned you didn't like this ingredient. You learned that this was a little bit too long of a recipe, but that's a beautiful, like you only learn through your mistakes. So it's like through this process, you actually have to make mistakes so that you can learn from them. So then the next thing, actually, I want to add one more thing about Pilates. It's so funny. I I think especially because social media, it's like you see all these girls and these super cute workout sets and like they all have all the equipment and they're all, you know, they have their, their hour blocked out on their calendar. And you know what's so funny is I literally roll out of bed and within like 30 minutes of waking up, I literally am on my carpet. I keep my weights and my Pilates ring like underneath my couch (laughs) and I'm in my pajamas. Like I probably just have glasses on. I look like a hot mess and I just pull up the Pilates. I just start doing Pilates in my pajamas. And 30 minutes later, I'm done working out for the day. And it's like, why did I have to make it so hard? Like, why did I have to drive to the gym? Why did I have to spend $40 on a boutique fitness class to get my workout in? Like, I literally roll out of bed in my pajamas. I'm talking to my husband while I do my Pilates. I spend basically no money. And it's I'm done with it before 8 a.m. <laughs> so I'm like, why, why do we make it? Or it could be 7 a.m. It could be 6 a.m. Why do we have to make it so difficult? It doesn't have to be that difficult, right? So the third question I want to ask you is, what is the vast ripple effect of you living your highest vision for yourself? Why is it imperative you call forward your highest vision sooner rather than later? So this is a big one because I think so often, and I actually think this is like a huge unlock for a lot of people, is that we really think we live in this world where it's just us. You know, like it's just us. Who cares if I'm bloated? Who cares if I have diarrhea? Because at the end of the day, my bloating and diarrhea doesn't impact anyone else, right? It's just me. And that is so false. So your bloating, your constipation, your diarrhea, your overeating, and I don't mean overeating in a way to fulfill things, but like mindless eating to fulfill an emotional need, your binge eating affects so many people. And as, once you realize that your behaviors actually affect other people is when it becomes much easier to turn your life around. So let me explain why. I could easily just sit at home in my pajamas. I mean, my job, I have to say, I because my job is remote, so I could easily do that, but but not actually. So, and you'll see why. We think like, okay, I have mild bloating. I have moderate bloating. I go to the bathroom, you know, a few times a week and it hurts. You live with it, right? It's not a life or death situation. But what it's actually doing is it is stopping the ripple effect of your gifts, of your magic touch from positively impacting people around you. So for example... If I were to live out my highest vision of self, if I was going to align to this person, right, who 
loves the food they eat, never feels like deprived or restricted in terms of like taste or satisfaction. Yes, I do have dietary restrictions and I do restrict the types of foods I eat, but I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I feel really good. I feel like I have everything. I feel like I have my hot foods, my cold foods, my sweet foods, my savory foods. I have different kinds of textures. I have fun foods. I have grounding foods, right? Like I'm not deprived in terms of those things. And so I feel comfortable in that way. So if I, and so, and then I also go to the bathroom every morning. I go to the bathroom sometimes two to three times a day, which is incredible. Um, I used to have insane bloating and I enjoy the, my body type. I just, I, I'm at home in my body. I like my body. And what effect does that have? Because I have learned certain skills coming from my past and you know my past, I'm able to see, okay, what did I used to do? What do I do now? What's different? And how can I teach that to other people so that they can experience the same feeling in their body? So that's step one. Me reducing bloating, me having regular bowel movements greatly impacts your life because I'm able to teach you how to do that too, okay? So that's one. It impacts my community. Number two, it impacts my husband because when he was with me from like 2014 to, you know, I mean, throughout like 2014 to 2017, then the 2019 with the alcohol, I was so miserable. So when he first met me in 2012, that was before I got food poisoning in 2014, I was like riding that low FODMAP diet. I was thriving in my body in 2012, 2011 to 2014, thriving. And we had the best time together. And because my energy was so good, he was attracted to me. And then he moved to San Francisco and I got really sick again because of the Cipro. And I was on this rabbit hole finding different diets. And it was like whenever we were together, I was so miserable. I was always complaining, always, always. And complaining is fine every once in a while. But when you're with someone who just doesn't stop complaining, when everything revolves around them and their illness, it impacts him. He doesn't want to hang out with someone like that. And he has a great quote that's like his dad taught him this when he was younger. He said, sit by the light, you get bright. Sit, sit by the ink, you get dark. So it's like he was attracted to my positive energy in 2012. And then there was a part of our relationship where I was so negative and it was like he didn't want to be around me that often. And I don't blame him because he's like, this is, it's ruining my life. And you can be like, oh, that's selfish. And he was incredibly supportive. But at some point, actually a supportive person puts their foot down and says, this isn't acceptable anymore. And that's what a good coach does too. Balancing that empathy with those boundaries. And so a lot of me getting better was I needed to do it for him. And our relationship got, I mean, it's an amazing relationship. I'm very lucky. But we're in like such a flow. And I've even noticed he just, the, the better I am, the happier we both are. Another thing is kids. I think about this, and this was a big motivator for me the last year is like, Okay, well, if I'm sick in my body and, you know, let's say I have these residual issues, like I used to do this all the time. This is why I bring this up all the time. Like someone would send me a nasty email. I get super triggered, uh, triggered. I get so emotional. And so because I'm so upset by that email, I would go and snack on a lot of chocolate. So let's say I'm still doing that and I have a kid who sees me doing that. I don't, couldn't think of a worse feeling than like passing on my issues to someone else. And then they're like, mommy, how do you stop that? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how you stop that because I haven't stopped it. And I'd say that's, yeah, right now a big motivator for me is like all these little residual things with people pleasing or online bullying. It's like I need to learn that if I want to be an effective teacher of those things. Uh, another thing is the collective, like my mark on the nutrition industry. I've already talked about that. Another one is jobs. So another thing is like, if you create your own business, you have, and it's successful, you could actually employ people and give them their dream job. 
And that like, think about that. Like imagine I would love to employ a whole team. They're all remote. They can work whatever hours they want. And we have just specific projects. So it's like, if you want to work at five in the morning, you want to work at 10 at night, you want to take a Wednesday off. Beautiful. But these, this is, and and how happy they could be and feeling like they're part of a, a family, right? So that's really deep, right? But I really want you to think about that for you. What is the vast ripple effect of you living out your highest vision for yourself? How does that impact the people you work with? How does that impact their families? How does it impact your family? How does that impact your friends? And it's going to be, you know, it might look different or similar to me, but what you, yeah, you, what you don't realize is how much your health impacts everyone else around you. So think about that. It's pretty powerful. So the next question, I want you to list the feelings associated with this dream health scenario. So for me, it's like, oh, I feel so light and I feel so energized. And and I say light as in like, you know, when you're so bloated and like full of stool or just like constantly going to the bathroom and you know how that feels. You know how much that brings your energy down and how much you focus on it and obsess about it. So it's like you want the opposite. You want to feel free. You want to feel light. You want to feel free. You want to feel in flow. You want this like feeling of energy throughout your body, right? Like your body is just in sync. It's just doing its thing. And I always come back to this vision, like these beautiful gowns. I do friends. I do Pilates with friends. So it's like if I want to do Pilates with friends, well, I need to be the good friend who embodies this to attract those kinds of friends, right? And I would feel beautiful. I'd feel content with myself. I'd be full of love. I'd feel gratitude for my body. I would carry myself like I was a treasure. Like, yeah, like how awesome is it that my body works this well? Like how beautiful is that? That's like an incredible thing. I would put my health first. I would believe that I deserved it. I would also not, I would not believe that it was hard or impossible to do. So those are some questions. I want you to ask yourself, what is the feelings associated with what you're ready to call in? How would you feel about yourself? How would you show up? How would you carry yourself in the world? What are some things you would do for yourself? What are some beliefs you would have? What are things that you would not believe? So you can tell my words are all about like beauty, effortlessness, easy, grateful, peaceful, love, right? Like how chill is that? (laughs) There's nothing in there about like harder, faster, stronger, like whip. I think of like a whip energy. It's literally the opposite. It's like this like ball of light that's just so, it's like whimsical and soft. It's almost like this bubble ball that kind of just kind of floats around. Like how chill is that? I think of it as like an iridescent light. I want you to embody, do now an embodiment exercise. If you had amazing digestion and your ideal body, your ideal feeling in your body, think about things that you would delegate at work, delegate at home. How would you dress? How would you take care of yourself? How would you care for your loved ones? What would you invest in? What would you prioritize? What would you create? And what are some next action steps for you? So for me, I would delegate at work. My ideal situation is I would only create content or work with clients and everything else I would delegate including like I would love someone to make recipes for me. I would love someone to make um, recipe videos, recipe content. I'd love someone to help me with editing, all of that. I would only do content and client work so that I actually have more time to really go deeper in my own, in my own essence to share more, more things, go deeper and deeper to share more. And I would also just be chill. Like I would work just a a normal amount of hours so that I could sleep well. I could hang out with my family. I could cook delicious foods. So I wouldn't overwork myself. At home, I would also delegate things like cleaning. I would love to delegate cleaning so that I have more time to just be in this ideal health state. 
I would dress like I am a treasure (laughs) because I am. And so are you. So it's like dressing exactly how I want to celebrate my body. It's not something that needs to be hidden. It's something that should be cherished. So, um, yeah, whether the clothing is 20 bucks or 200 bucks or 2000, I want to dress like I am a treasure and show it off, show off my body in a way that feels good to me. I would take care of myself like I am the number one priority. And how would I care for my loved ones? I'd be so grateful they're in my life. I would make them delicious food and I would allow them space to put themselves first as well. I would invest in my education. I would invest in my health. So anything in regards to health. For example, I have an unlimited food budget. So while I have budgets other places, I spend unlimited on health. Even if things something's like a little bit more expensive, I'm like, well, this would this goes back to putting number one with my health. So I don't restrict in that way. I would prioritize sleep, movement. I would prioritize my mental health. So if I need, if I'm really stressed and having a bad day, it's okay. Other things can wait. How do we make Becky feel as peaceful and grateful and happy? Um, or not happy, but just peaceful, grateful, content so that she can return to giving, right? Like it, if I'm in such a bad place and just bun- punching out emails, that just sends more negativity in the world. That makes me feel bad. And that, at the end of the day, hurts my health. And I would create helpful pieces of content for people to consume. So that's an example of an embodiment exercise. Now, there is a wonderful book. It's called The Feeling is the Secret by a guy named Neville something. It's like it's a really quick read. And it's a wonderful book. It's basically about how manifestation is all about connecting the conscious mind with the subconscious. So our conscious masculine mind, if you remember my podcast I did on masculine and feminine energies, our conscious masculine mind is what is ruling our day. But our subconscious feminine mind, conscious is emotion, subconscious is feelings, that is really only activated two times, three times. First thing in the morning or right before bed. And you know I have everyone's more creative first thing in the morning or right before bed. Like things just flow. And that's because you're tapping into your subconscious. I love creating content like seven in the morning. Like creating content is like the best time for me because I'm like so deep in my subconscious. If I'm trying to create content at 2 p.m., like I'm trapped. It's like logic, logic, logic. Like it doesn't flow. And so when you're in your subconscious right when you wake up or right before bed, and also in meditation or prayer. So you can just meditate. You know That's why they say meditate at those times is best. But that's actually where you tap into the subconscious, and the subconscious will then affect your conscious mind throughout the day. So I, I mean, meditation is amazing. I love to be magnetics meditations, but I also love journaling. And I've been doing this way more frequently recently. I just sit down and I just start journaling about everything I'm grateful for. I journal about my future. I journal about, you know, it's like, okay, if if this is my future goal, what's the kind of person I have to be to embody this goal? And I just want to say something, because I want to talk about something that is relevant to me right now. I was journaling about my five-year business vision, and I saw this girl who was like, she always had these cute little dresses on. She always had her makeup done. She had a film studio. And one thing that really stood out was that she was incredibly organized. I'm talking about like down to the minute, things were organized. Everything was in its place. There was no stress because things just flowed like systems. And it appeared to me I was like, I am not organized like that in my life right now. I don't have my folders are a mess. I don't have a flow of things. I don't have like, I don't have like a daily to do or a project list in the way that I want to. And I was like, oh my God, I need to become more organized. So what did I do? I downloaded a book from one of the most, the best organization people. It's an amazing book. Oh my God, changed my life already. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. One second. The book is called Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. Incredible book. So I was like, okay. So as soon as I started organizing my life, because you're not, you don't just sit there and be like, okay, if I want to be a wonderful businesswoman, I need to go 
organize my life. Like it just, it doesn't happen like that. It happens through journaling. When you, when you look at this person out in the future, you cast her in the future and you say, what's different about our two lives? Organization was key. I downloaded the book. I started, I organized my files. I made project lists. I organized my iPhone notes. I organized my calendar. And it's so weird. Things just started like flowing into my life. I just started attracting opportunities to me, clients. It's very weird how these things work. And just because there's a subconscious action, which is becoming more organized and then consciously without even without me even knowing it, my organization was showing up in my conscious life and it was impacting my conversations. It was impacting the energy I was giving out and that attracted more opportunity to me. So it's really wild how this works. So I want you to journal in the morning. When I'm laying in bed at night, if I can remember to do this, I think about that girl five years from now because then that primes my brain for sleep and primes me for the next day. It's like, no, that's just what I do. I'm just someone, I always do Pilates every morning. I always gravitate towards these foods. I love feeling this way. It's normal for me to feel amazing in my body every single day. It would be very abnormal for me not to. That would be a problem. It is just what I do. It's just what I know. So the feeling is the secret. How can you celebrate and have gratitude for things in your current reality that are a match or close match to the frequencies now? So some things that I do every day, it's like I truly celebrate my body. I wear clothes that celebrate my body. I am so excited every single morning to have my smoothie. I freaking love potatoes. So like whenever I eat potatoes, I'm like, yes, potato time. I've recently been eating dates again, which are higher FODMAP foods, but I've been able to tolerate them pretty well. I've been eating them over maybe the last one and a half months. And every time I bite into one, I'm like, this is literally heaven on earth. Because like I wasn't, I wasn't able to, you know, eat dates for so long that I, it's like, I literally treat it like a blessing. Even my bananas, like a blessing. And when I don't like, like a salad, let's say a salad doesn't light me up as much as, you know, my dates do, right? But it's like, okay, I put some maple syrup in the dressing. I, I make the lettuce. I make sure the lettuce is super crunchy. And I'm like, oh, this is so good for my body. And when I, ma- when I add the maple syrup, it actually made, it made the salad so enjoyable. Before I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. And now I'm like, oh, this is so good. So I really tune in. Do I actually like the salad? Okay, well, the salad is good for me. It really helps me with my digestion, but I don't really like it. How can I make me like it? I put some maple syrup on it. I freaking love it. So how can you live more life to the fullest right now? How can you have more fun, more bliss? I was stressed the other day, and it was literally in the middle of the most beautiful snowstorm. And I was like, I'm so lucky. Like, I I know what it's like. Like, when I lived in New York, you know, it gets so sloshy with the snow. And I'm like, I'm living in this cozy house, so peaceful with this beautiful snow outside. So I just took, I was like, none of this matters. And I just took my dog and we just ran up and down the street and we were laughing hysterically. He was like trying to eat the snow. He was jumping for the snow. And I was so much happier after I did that. It's like, why don't we stop to do things like that? Like, what are we so in a rush for? What are we so angry about? So some general things are, some general concepts are, one, we want to just have overall awareness. We want to reframe life's challenges. We want to zoom out. We want to create a larger perspective. We want to act in agreement with our highest self. And we want to detach from time and outcomes. I think that's the biggest one is like, okay, I'm organized now, so I'm going to attract clients right now. And by putting out that energy, you actually stop the process from working because people can feel that energy of like neediness, right? And it's the same for health. Like when you are, I can, I know this feeling so well, and this usually happens, let's say I've been traveling or something kind of pushes me out of alignment with my body. It's like you come home and you're like, oh, I don't feel well. I need to feel better right now. And you almost start forcing foods down that you think would help but then you feel, then, then you don't get, you're not there yet. It's like, okay, it's been two hours. It's been one day. I'm not feeling better yet. And you're forcing, forcing, forcing. And that actually makes the outcome. 
it's like watching water boil and it also like pushes what you need away from you. Whereas if you're like, hey, I was traveling. I had so much fun. I'm a little, I'm a little bloated. It's okay. It's okay. Like, let me take a deep breath. Like what would feel really good to me right now? If I could have anything I wanted, what would feel super good for me right now? And sometimes the answer would surprise you a little bit when you really tap in and you give yourself what you actually need and you detach from the outcome. And then it's like you one day, you know, you wake up, whether it's the next day, whether it's in a few days from now, and you're totally back to normal. And you don't even realize that you weren't stressing about it because you knew you were going to go back to normal. And you knew you would take yourself there back to normal because you have the skill sets, because you have the right energy. And you just have to trust. It's so different, such a different energy. So the paradox of collapsing time and getting yourself to achieve your goals sooner rather than later is that you actually have to detach from the when and that allows things to flow in faster. You have to already act as if you're living your best life, as if you're in your best body. You are already celebrating your body. You are so grateful for what it already does for you. And that when you're in that energy, things just like flock to you. So I also want you to list any current or recent challenges you experienced and then look at them from a higher perspective and write out why they happened for you and why they happened for your greatest good and evolution. I've talked about this at length. You know, like I honestly think my health issues are a huge blessing for me. They gave me a tremendous amount of strength. They showed me that I was a very strong person. They really they forced me to be my authentic self. It was like chronic. I was sick and it forced me to be my authentic self. If I wasn't sick, I would probably be a drone in the matrix, in, a, in the box, in a sky, on the computer, just probably like drinking my life away probably. So this forced me to be the real Becky and develop a lot of strength to really use creative talents at my best. So I'm truly grateful for it, genuinely. That's why this podcast is called Luxury IBS. It has nothing to do with actual luxury goods. Well, one, I thought that the luxury and IBS was like they're oxymorons, and I liked the compare the Paris the the compa- I liked them together, but genuinely in my heart, it is a blessing to me. And I know that bothers a lot of people when I say that, but that's how I feel. I feel so proud of everything I've 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 overcome. I'm so proud of myself. That's something that no one can take away from me. But you will hit bumps in the road, and. For example, I, this summer, you know, I, I have this, I'm the one three, I need to try everything on my body so I can authentically speak to it. And I had a lot of people asking me about strength training and I undertook this summer for like two months. Um, I went down the strength training path. I lifted weights, like 20 pound weights. I really pushed myself and I did it for a few months and number one did not, I get it. It was only three months, but it did not get me the results I wanted within the three months. I actually felt worse. My energy was kind of drained. I hated it. I genuinely hated doing it. And I felt like this guilt, like why don't I like strength training like other people? And I was also pissed. I was like, why did this not work out for me? Like I forced myself to do this. And you know what I did? I just, I let it go. I went back to what I enjoy, which is just Pilates, yoga, and doing it for as long as I want to do it. So some mornings it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 30 minutes. And I felt way better in my body. I enjoyed my day way more. I enjoyed the exercise. And I was like, okay, well, you could say to yourself, why did I choose strength training? Like, why did I do that to myself? I'm so stupid, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that was a blessing. That was for my highest evolution. What strength training told me was that that was not something, it taught me the energy of what was not right for me so that I could easily identify what was right for me. And so I've always known I like yoga and Pilates. I tried it on. I really didn't enjoy it. And now, I, now I'm just doing my Pilates. Like there is no question about it. I'm like, oh no, this is 100% for me. It's always been for me. And that's okay. So you, it's like that 
strength training journey was for my greatest good and for my evolution. It made, it strengthened the po- the other parts of my life that were positive. So you can think about that a million times. I think a lot of people are always like, oh, why me? Why did I do this? Why did I try this diet? Why did I do this? No, it's for your greatest good and your greatest evolution. And so you can remind yourself anytime there's a challenge that pops into your life, instead of beating yourself up, like let's say you ate a whole bag of chips because you were stressed, okay, or they, they seemed good and now your tummy hurts. Instead of being like, wow, I'm such a loser for eating all these chips, no. You say, how, how could that, how did that challenge cr- prepare me to be my highest self? Maybe through eating that bag of chips, you learn something about yourself. Maybe you learn that you love salty foods, that you need to eat more salty foods. Maybe you realize that you skipped breakfast and breakfast is really important to you. You could look at it a million different ways, but every quote unquote step back is actually an incredible opportunity to learn something, to make you even stronger, to make you closer to your health. So anytime something goes wrong in your day, don't say, why me? You say to yourself, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be a better version of myself. And the last thing I'll leave you with today is what type of life are you attracting now compared to what you wish to attract In what ways is this mirroring something you could clean up in your own life and business? That one's really good. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed this exercise. And I would love to hear what you come up with in your own journaling, in your own own exercises. Uh, Feel free to send me a DM. I'm always a DM away. I'm hoping you're having a wonderful holiday season as well. And I'll talk to you next week.